Hey, what is up, YouTube? Here is Twan again, and today I wanted to upload a video where I wanted to show you guys my current binder, how far it is. Um, the goal of this binder is to collect as many full art cards and alternate arts starting with the black and white era. But before I start this video, I know that I don't own every full art card in this binder but the way how it is is currently enough for me and I'm really happy about it so I would say let's get right into it let's take a look at all these awesome cards full art cards started with uh, the release of black and white cards and our first cards that we received were with the black and white collection with the Reshiram and with the Zekrom also, when Noble Victories came out, we have the Three Musketeers as well as the amazing Victini Full Art. I really love the texture of this card. And then uh, Next Destinies or Psycho Drive, Psycho Boost was released. And I like the Groudon, especially on this page. Moving on to the next page, we have, of course, more Full Art cards. And a few cards that are my favorite cards are obviously the meta-defining cards during that time. Uh, Mewtwo EX and Darkrai EX were especially, um, or were heavily played. And so yeah, these two cards are one of my favorites. I also love this Rainbow Ho-Oh because it was the first deck that I used in a tournament. And so this card also has a special spot in my heart. Moving on, we have a few Dragon's Exalted cards. And these two cards, man, these were so hard to get. I have been looking for these cards for more than a year now, I'd say. Or well, half a year at least, intensively. And yeah, uh, in the end, I bought these cards in a, I would say, plate to excellent condition for a decent price. But I have been looking everywhere for these cards. So I'm really, really happy that I've been able to get these cards. Also on this page, two cards are really um, sticking out for me. It is this Mew EX and this Landris EX because I met a good friend at a tournament who used to play this card and this Landris was also in many of my decks when I played during that time. Then we have the gorgeous Plasma EX cards and I think these cards are absolutely stunning. I love the blue borders and the lightning on these cards and yeah here I love the Lugia and these two were so obnoxious during that time when they were played and I really like the Jirachi on here it looks great and then we have some uh, cute Pokemon cards shiny collection cards and these cards are how do I say it also quite rare especially this Mew um, then we also have this uh, Pikachu Fall Art from the 15th anniversary. And yeah, that marks the end of the black and white era. And the Venusaur and the Skarmory are the start of the X and Y era. Here we also have a ton of great Fall Art cards. We have the Splash Toys and the Charizard to complete the Kanto Trio. As well as uh, the uh, Lucario over here, it looks great. And I think Seismitoad was also a meta defining card during that time. I also love the Gardevoir in this page and the Ganga over here with these jelly beans or whatever it is. And then on the next page, oh man, we have a lot of amazing cards. I don't know where to start. 
but let's start off with the left page with the Team Magmas Groudon and the Team Aquas Kyogre. I think these two cards were really underappreciated when they came out and recently a lot of people started to pick up on how good these cards look and yeah they became quite popular and I also really like these two Rayquazas over here and this Shaman was also infamous during its time when Roaring Skies came out. I still remember seeing a bunch of videos where people wanted to pull this Shaman no matter in um, regular rare or in full art because everybody needed to play this card. We also have this Mega Sceptile. I think it looks great and yeah. Moving on we have even more awesome cards. We have this Lugia, this Giratina from Bandit Ring. I'm not really sure how this set was called and some legendary Pokemon and what I love about these cards is these uh, square pattern hollow stripe foil. I don't know how it's called but it looks great. I also like these Arceus over here. We also have the Mega Mewtwo's, the Y and the X ones and we have the Red Shrimp Gyarados over here. Some amazing cards and yeah next we have Pokecune, a really, really expensive set. I guess it's kind of justified given how amazing these cards are. We have the Flareon, Jolteon and Vaporeon EX card, the Pikachus, the Gardevoir, the Sylveon, so every hit is a banger. Also we have the Full Art and um, uh, Articuno and Zepdos to commemorate the 20th anniversary with the CP6 set that was released or Evolutions. Then we have some more awesome EX cards. We have some more Evolutions with the Glaceon and the uh, Umbreon and we also have a shiny Mega Gardevoir EX over here with the Volcanion for the movie that came out. And on the next page, we have our Generations Mythical Collection Pokemon promos. And these cards are awesome. I love the sparkling effect on each card. And on this page, I really like the Mew and the Shaman full art. On the next page, we have a few more full arts. And um, on the bottom half, we have the CP6 base set full arts that came out and I think this set was also really underappreciated during the release. Um, during that time I was also in Japan and I was not interested in picking up these boxes because I wanted to have Sun and Moon boxes. They came out during the same time, around the same time and I did not buy a single CP6 base set. Then we mark the end of the X and Y era with the best of X and Y. And here we have a few more full art cards from the set as well as the Battle Festa Mewtwo. I've also been looking for this card for a long time. It's really expensive but a really nice seller gave me a great discount on this card. So yeah, now I also own this awesome Mewtwo. And to mark the end of the EX era, I finish these pages with the UR or Ultra Rare cards. And during the Black and White era, they started off with Shiny Pokemon and their energy or coin symbols on the card. And what I love about these cards is the textures around the Pokemon card. I'm not really sure if you can see it on camera, but it looks amazing. Then sometime during the middle of the black and white era uh, they have decided to uh, give the UR Ultra Rare cards uh, golden borders which make them look much better in my opinion and I really like how textured these cards are. And uh, 
starting with the X and Y era, they also gave gold cards uh, the full art treatment, which I also love. And on these two pages, I have to say I like the silver Dialga and the uh, golden Alakazam because there's also a Lugia and an Umbreon on it. Here we still have two more full art EXs with the Shaman and the Xerneas. And then we go over to the Sun and Moon cards. The Sun and Moon era was the time when I came back to collecting Pokemon cards again because of these alternate arts were the reason. They just look amazing. And I know a lot of people say Sun and Moon cards are underrated, but in my opinion, it is one of the strongest eras. They brought out so, so many awesome artworks. And I think they laid a foundation for the later generations with these alternate arts. And taking a look at these two pages, we have absolute stunning cards like the Larios and the Larias. We have this Mewtwo, uh, this uh, Zapdos, Articuno and uh, Moltres. And there are so, so many more. I cannot go into detail, otherwise it would take such a long time. But yeah, just take a look at these awesome cards. During the later stages of the Sun and Moon era at the release or during the release of Dream League and Tag All Stars, people started to realize that Sun and Moon cards are not that bad. And I still remember the time when these cards became a little bit more popular. These sets were absolutely amazing. Tech All Stars also introduced uh, the concept of God Packs to Pokemon. So, yeah, it went through the roof afterwards. So, um, on this page, we finish off the Sun and Moon era with the uh, Pikachu full art that was released in the Master Battle Collection set. And another card that was also released with this Pikachu card is Alolan Friends. Uh, Alolan Friends is the rarest of the friend cards. And it also laid a foundation for later cards. We also got, I think, Galarian Friends, Sinnoh Friends and Hisuian Friends now. And I think this is also a really nice set for people to collect. Because these full art cards are amazing. These full art trainer cards. And yeah, we end off the Sun and Moon era with their respective gold cards. These two were released uh, with the GX Battle Boost set that has the really expensive Lily on uh, in it. And then we have some ultra shiny gold cards. Really, really nice. And we finish off with the Tag All-Stars gold cards. Moving on we have the Sword and Shield alternate arts and like I said the Sun and Moon sets laid a foundation for the later sets to come. These sets. It took Sword and Shield five sets until the first alternate art was released and when these cards were released it was a banger. It was insane. People lost their minds. Um, Single strike style and rapid strike style. Oh man, I still remember when these two sets came out. They had such amazing artwork. I love this Urshifu VMAX especially. I There's so much going on in the art of the card. So yeah, this Galarian Moltres is also really popular. I also love this Celebi that was given out for free for the Jet Black Geist set. So the Jet Black Geist set was this set with the Shadow Rider Calyrex. The artworks of the Sword and Shield era cards are just insanity. I don't really know how Pokemon will top this. After that we had the release of the infamous Eevee Hero set. A massive, massive popular set with amazing artworks we have eight different evolutions and there's one evolution with the artwork for anyone everybody will 
find a card that they like in this set. And yeah, that's also reflected on the price of these cards. Um, it was a long time where many of these alternate arts were available on eBay for 50 bucks, but these times are gone. And these VMAX alternate arts are just insane. It's just crazy how expensive they are. And I'm really sorry for everyone who wants to start a collection of alternate arts during the Sword and Shield era because these were so hard to get. These um, VMAX evolutions, uh, they were given out in a tournament or during a lottery. And this Umbreon is also crazy expensive. So, yeah, I also struggled to get these. Then moving on, we have Tower Perfection and Blue Sky Stream. Also some solid sets. And I'm really glad that during that time I was only missing this card. So I bit the bullet. I think it was one or two years ago. And bought this Rayquaza card for 250 bucks. Uh, during that time it was at its peak. And like I said, I was missing the card and bit the bullet. But in retrospect, looking at how expensive this card is right now, I'm really glad I made the purchase. Um, we also had the release of two uh, starter decks or premium deck alternate arts uh, with the Intellion VMAX and the Gengar VMAX uh, drawn by Sao Sao, so so. I'm not really sure how to pronounce the name, but I love the artwork of this person. They, they draw so cute Pokemon and yeah, this game guy is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, moving on, we have the release of Fusion Strike and then we have Starbirth. And in this page, I have to say my favorite two cards are this Dialga, uh, this Origin Palkia and this Dialga. Especially this one since the texture is really nice on this card. And yeah, then we get to the last page for now, uh, with the release of Lost Origin, Lost Abyss, and Paradigm Trigger. And yeah, these two pages, or these two rows, were a headache. Because when Lost Origin or Lost Abyss was released, uh, this Giratina was $150. And people did not want to buy this card. They were saying, hey, the price will drop because 150 for an alternate art is too expensive. Then people realized that this Giratina was not easy to pull at all. The price started to skyrocket. And this rapidly grew to $300, $400. Um, the same applies somehow to this Lugia with Paradigm Trigger. When this set came out, the Lugia started off at 600 to 700 dollars which was insane i've never seen a set card being released at 700 dollars so yeah i skipped on the lugia at first because i thought it was too expensive then the market settled as more reprints hit and people realizing that it's not really worth it to pay eight or seven hundred dollars for this card and i grabbed one up recently when it was a little bit cheaper so yeah that was it for this current update i'm currently waiting for my vista universe cards to finish off the uh, sword and shield era and once i put these cards into my binder i will definitely upload another um, update video if you stayed up until this point thank you very much i hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah, see you next time. Peace.